First Republic is one of these banks that had, I think, 68% of its deposits were not insured, right? So you had all these people saying, wait a minute, if I'm not protected by the FDIC, I'm gonna start moving some of my money out. And that made First Republic very weak. There was not a buyer for this bank. So all of these other banks coming together to put money in there to say, we, um, we're going to bail out First Republic, not the taxpayer, other banks. Hi everyone, Silver Joker here. Okay, so this is a podcast that me and my good friend Silver5150 done a few months ago. The subject matter was a little out of sync at the time. Plus I got a lot of new subscribers recently who may have not seen this video. So I'm gonna repost it because I think it's a little more relevant now. I made a few minor adjustments, a little tweaks, a little bit of modification. So if you've seen this video already, um, you know, maybe want a refresher. If you haven't, I believe that you're gonna find it very interesting. So um, enjoy. Hi everyone, Silver Joker here. I'm back with my good friend, Silver5150. Got another show for you guys today, another podcast. Silver5150, how you doing my friend? Doing pretty good today, Silver Joker. How is everyone out there in Silver Joker land? This podcast today, I just want to let you know, this podcast today could get us both disappeared. It's that treacherous a subject to traverse. So my question to you, do you wish to proceed? I am willing to make any sacrifice for my fellow silver stackers with the exception of giving them free silver. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Okay, so we're going to talk about the banking system today. Now, you sent me a, a text where you had a link to a video that was on YouTube where this guy was talking about the banking system and you were saying that you could see some cracks forming along the edge of the banking system, some 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 issues that they may be having, all right? So I took that clip and I ran with it, did a little research, and I actually think it's more serious than where you left it. I, I would have to agree with that. And to keep in mind, um, in this clip, you know, they're, they're having a specific conversation about the solvency of the FDIC. And if you guys don't know what that means, that's the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. They're about as federal as the Federal Reserve. They're not a federal agency. They are a corporation. Let's not, you know, be confused. Mm -hmm. Which means they're probably, you know, at work around the globe, but mostly in the United States. Now, the question is, how often are they having these meetings? And to what degree are they looking at the situation because in the clip it's it's uh it's it's pretty dire well i'm gonna tell you this i am not a banking expert at all i did a little research so you know correct me if i'm wrong with any of this okay so from what i understand only a fraction of actual currency is in paper form in banks correct right so 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 the majority of the funds in a bank the majority of a bank's worth is in other forms of currency other than physical paper currency. Right. If I had to speculate, I would say that any given bank, be it commercial or credit union or private uh, local bank, is probably about 10% solvent in physical cash, given their uh, holdings. Okay. So if, so if I deposit my money in the bank legally, they have to refund my or, or let me withdraw my deposit in cash that's that's the law right, right. physical cash mm -hmm. so let's say that 10 percent of a bank's managed money is in physical form it's in physical mm -hmm. paper that they can hand you and let's say that 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 physical money is in their bank in their vault right, right. so if if let's say 10 out of 100 people come into the bank on any given time and withdraw cash out of there a bank can handle that no, it's not too they much. They have they have that much cash on hand. But let's say that 50 out of 100 people all of a sudden show up to the bank and they want their cash. Not just a little bit of cash, but they want their cash out of the bank. Now, that would be a problem for a bank. From what I understand, a bank will become, and there's a word for that, I can't, I don't. Insolvent. Insolvent, that's exactly right. Okay, so a bank will become insolvent. Basically, that means that they will not have enough physical cash on hand to satisfy the volume of cash being withdrawn out of their physical institution, their, their physical cash coming out. That is correct. Okay, so that's not good for a bank. That it is, is not. That's terrible for a bank. And so they have contingencies, they have things to put in place, and we see that all over the world where a bank will actually shut down withdrawals. They'll just not let people take their money out of the bank. Right, and that's the extreme case. Now, let's back up a little bit because what, what needs to be understood about banks and how they manage their assets, 
I can tell you for a fact that if it even looks like 5% of the patrons are going to come in there and try to do physical withdrawal of most or all of their cash, in, during that process, whatever bank management is there, they're going to try like crazy to convince these customers to take something in lieu of physical cash. You just say, hey, we've got these checks we can issue. We got, ah, you know, yeah. uh, electronic uh, um, similarities or, you know, things you can use alternatives instead of, you know, trust us, you know, because look, insolvency or lack of solvency is all about the amount of trust in that institution. So, you know, their insolvency is based on the fact, can they deliver what the customers want? And if it looks like they can't do that, they've already lost the battle. So they're going to try to mitigate that type of activity by offering other things and probably even sweeten a deal to keep it from happening. Right. So it is so it's a big motivation for a bank to appear solvent, to make sure that people have trust in their institution because basically they want you to come and deposit your money in there. That is the biggest thing. So they can give out loans and get interest on those loans. That's how a bank, I guess, makes money. No, you're absolutely correct. And let's go back to the 10% rule we were talking about or the 10% um, a marker. That 10%, it also represents the amount of fractional reserve lending a lot of banks can use to create more capital. So, you know, you deposit, Silver Joker deposits a dollar, the bank gets that dollar and says, hey, we got one dollar from Silver Joker. Let's go ahead and create nine more electronic dollars and issue those out in the form of loans and earn interest on the loans and earn fees on the loan processing. And that way we can grow, you know, 10 times on one of Silver Joker's dollars. So, you know, it's, it's important for them to maintain confidence in their ability to function as a bank because they've got all of that leverage up against them. Right. Okay. So this now, now I'm glad you said that because this is where me and you could get in trouble. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm, I'm ready for that. Let's, okay. let's, let's, let's get in trouble. Okay. So this is what, how I see it. Let's say that you go down to the bank, you want to draw your cash out and they're saying, okay, look, you know, we can't give you this much cash right now because we simply don't have it. Now, I don't know if they'll tell you that or not, but it wouldn't be hard for you to figure out. If you got money in the bank, you go down there to get your money and they're only giving you a fraction of that cash, red flags are gonna go up. Now, this is what's gonna happen because you're my best friend, my brother. Yes, you're gonna call me and say, look, man, you better get down to the bank, something going on, better get your money out of the bank or get as much as you can out of the bank. Now, I'm gonna call all the people that I know, they're gonna call all the people they know, that's, that's gonna make a run on the bank. Now, it's definitely that, information run on the bank. It's an information run on the bank. You know how fast information travels, right. and that will definitely escalate the situation quickly. Right. Now, listen, the reason why we're talking about this today, people, is because this is happening. It is happening right now as we speak. Now, listen, the clip that I'm going to show you guys right now is a clip that uh, was a part of this video on YouTube, and I'll leave a link so you can go see the entire video if you like. But this clip right here that I'm going to show you is who are these people again, Silver 50 and 50? So these are members, I believe. Um, if it's not all FDIC members, they're FDIC folks that are probably leading the meeting along with some really big heavy hitters that are um, backed by them, you know, that have insurance with their, you know, program. And so, right. you know, that's what the meeting, these, these are the people talking right now. And the ones that are leading the conversation, I do believe are FDIC people. Okay, so I want you guys to listen to what this gentleman is saying. Listen to how important this person makes it that the banking system appears to be solid and trustworthy. I don't think you have much hope of, of reaching a public that doesn't have a professional need to know. I, I, I completely agree with that. I almost think you'd scare the public if you put this out. Like, why are they telling me this? Should I be concerned about my bank? Like my insurance company doesn't tell me what they're doing with my assets. So they just assume they're going to pay my claim, right? It's, it's, I, I think you've got to think of the unintended consequences of taking a public that has more full faith and confidence in the banking system than maybe people in this room do, <laughs> that we want them to have full faith and confidence in the banking system. They know the FDIC insurance is there. They know it works. They put their money in, they get their money out. So there, there's a select crowd of people that are in the institutional side. And if they want to understand this, they're going to find a way to understand this. There's a bunch of law firms represented in this room. There's a bunch of people that charge them by the hour, a lot of money to explain this all to them. And, 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 and it's fine. And I, I, don't have a, I don't have a problem with that. And they all have huge staffs. But I would be careful 
about the unintended consequences of starting to blast too much of this out in the general public. Now, what do you think of that, Silver 5150? What do you think of what you just heard? Well, I'm sorry. I, it's, it's, it's no no matter. You know, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not, you know, um, one of these guys that, you know, worked at Guantanamo like you may have. Uh, but, but I can tell. <laughs> guys, you didn't need to know that. I can I can smell fear. I can hear anxiety and fear in the gentleman's voice just answering the question. I think the first gentleman might have been um, a member uh, or possibly someone that was benefiting from FDIC and was asking, said, hey, you know, how are you guys going to handle a situation like this? And the gentleman answered the question. He was going, "Hey, is there any way we can just kind of maybe not?" You know. <laughs> so he seemed he seemed very concerned because it's almost like he could project how bad or how how serious it could get if people decided they were going to be, you know, um, adamant about having access to their funds at a time when it's not good for the banks to do so. Right now, now listen, we're, I'm not trying to scare you. So 5150 is not trying to scare you, or anything like that. This is not a doomsday podcast. I feel confident that I've already prepared for this type of situation because I've already stacked a bunch of physical silver. I won't need a bank. I won't need access. I won't need somebody to grant me access. So I guess that's really the the point of this podcast is just think about your future. Think about where things are going and where they may go. Exactly. The way I would look at it, you know, uh, for the folks out there in Silver Joker land, and most of you guys know, you know, what we're getting at, and most of you guys have actually done things to prepare uh, in this, this, this direction. But for those of you that may have, you know, fallen short, feel like you're not caught up, you've got capital to use. How do you use that capital to create a self-sufficient system for yourself without all the technology and the excess and abundance we have right now? What things would you buy? What things would you do? to make yourself a standalone complex. It's kind of like, it's kind of what you need to, to think about now. Now, what's, what's critical about the FDIC's role in all of this, if say an event happened, you're gonna have a lot of people finding themselves to where they don't have any of the stuff that say people prior to this prepared for, and they're going to have to travel back in time by hurrying up and grabbing all their cash and hurrying up and trying to catch up with you know their preparations to to get in position to survive what comes next and that's where the bottleneck's going to be right so just have a contingency you know if the bank tells you all of a sudden that they have to you know close down withdrawals for now what are you going to do I mean, if you don't have a debit card that's attached to your bank account i do and you know i'm no financial expert i cannot give you financial advice but i would say that is probably a good idea to have access to your the funds in your account without actually having to go down there and get them. But at some point, that's right. going to be an issue as well. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because what people need to realize is that, yes, you know, cash is king, you know, in a situation like this, and the cash is great. But there are other avenues, mechanisms, and systems that uh, banks have set up for us to use to purchase things. So just keep that in mind. There's other ways to quickly move your funds or to quickly get your funds from one place to another or access them if you're willing to trust some of these other mechanisms in place. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to restrict yourself to that specific medium, meaning physical cash, when everybody else is doing the same thing. The idea of being an alternative investor and the people that join this community know you want to do what everybody else is not doing. You want to be that contrarian. Right, absolutely. And I'll just say this, you know, just, just as a side note, these systems are, I mean, these alternative systems are good. You know, the debit, you know, if you got a debit card mm -hmm. or whatever, those things are good. But I know I agree. that some of the things that I want, if something you know catastrophic happens, I won't be able to get them using anything other than something physical. I know that. I won't say what those are now because that's a that's not part of this video. A lot of people got an idea of what I'm talking about, but <laughs> they're metal. <laughs> but exactly. Metal. So just keep that in mind. All I'm saying is, and all we're saying is, just think about alternative ways to. You know, um, use your finances if you don't have access to your cash. You don't have access to the banking system. It should be you should have something else that you can use uh, to get the things you need. And that's all we're going to talk about. So I think we've covered just about everything we can about this. Like I said, we probably won't be around much longer once the powers that be hear this video. Uh, we probably <laughs> won't be around anymore. But if we are, <laughs> we're going to talk about that sequoia. Absolutely, absolutely. I will divulge everything. Nothing's okay, so anything you want to add about uh, what we talked about today? Well, you know, um, I would say if, if I was to, to 
address the prudence of the situation. I understand, like Silver Joker said, guys, this is up on us already. It's not something that's coming. You know, bank restrictions, drawdowns, uh, runs, limits, all these things are being looked at, addressed, and some countries are already in effect where people have a limit on how many times per day or how much they can get out of the banks. I say prudence to mean that you need to start acting now or at least educating yourself in a way that's going to give you the ability to react quickly when you hear certain language or you see certain events happening in your town or wherever you're located. Just be ready for that. Absolutely. And like I said in many videos, a stack of physical silver, physical metals may not be for you. It's not for everyone. But I would suggest you definitely have something other than physical cash to rely on if things really get bad. And, you know, judging from what's going on around the world and what other people are having to suffer through and what the potential could be, you always want to keep your eyes on that horizon. Those dark clouds may pass over you, but it might be a direct hit and you want to be prepared for that. Anyway, Silver Train is rolling and uh, we're going to talk about that Sequoia, I promise you. <laughs> anyway, keep stacking. Peace.